Psalm 105. Another chapter of interesting Jewish history. And we are in a time that history has been erased. It has been changed. It has been just not taught. And when we look at the Bible and we read the Bible, we understand that God repeats often the Jewish history. And when you study the book of Exodus, you realize that in the tribulation period, Exodus is going to happen again. Jesus Christ came. He's coming again. So Psalms 105, history of the Jewish people. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. And that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to proclaim briefly Genesis, Exodus, and the wilderness journey. Sing unto him. Sing psalms. That's what psalms are for, singing. Unto him. Talk of all his wondrous work. We're to proclaim how good God is. We're to proclaim to people that God is greater and better than anything else. Glory ye in his holy name. And what names do world and Christians lift up that's not the name of Jesus. And there is no other name given amongst men whereby you must be saved. And it's not only a name, it's a holy name. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. People who are truly seeking and reaching out to God. A glad heart. Because the world will give you a heart of distress. Seek. Seems to be a running word now. The Lord. And his strength. Seek his face evermore. Listen, I know personally, when you're down and out, God gives you the strength to keep going. And I don't know what God does, and I don't know how God does it, but this is sometimes in my Christian walk, I gotta say, why haven't I given up? Why am I still going? And even Paul says, I am in a straight betwixt two, having desire to be absent, to, to, far, to be present with Christ, which is far better. But nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. And Paul kept going. And Paul was one wounded and hurting Christian. And Paul had enemies everywhere. The world, the government, Christians, the churches. Remember. This had Memorial Day weekend. Remember. His marvelous work that he have done. You can't remember what God has done if you don't read what God has done. Now, I can only assume what modern churches are teaching today. I know one thing some churches eat these vegetables that talk to you. You know why they got to have vegetables talk to you? 
Because the people that go to that church are vegetables. I mean, you seriously got to sit there and watch vegetables tell you about the Bible. What nonsense. His wonder and the judgments of his mouth. What are the judgments? Let's not talk about the judgments. What are the judgments? Tornadoes, hurricanes, famine, pestilence, lies, darkness, death, tragedy, evil. Those are the judgments of God. Coronavirus is a judgment of God. And nobody knows that because nobody's brought up the history of the Bible to say, hey. And when we come up to the next play, no one's going to say, hey, this, you know, this looks like Exodus. And I believe coronavirus is not just the first that's happened, it's many. Man, we've had nuclear power plants crumble. We've had a flood in, in Japan that just wiped out. We've had four airplanes by our enemy, a religious group of people, crash into buildings and one into a field. We've had tornadoes and hurricanes and one city in Louisiana just completely almost wiped off the map. And we've had a place in Florida where, it's, where a hurricane almost wiped it completely off the map. And no one is turning to God. Like Pharaoh and the Egyptians. And then the next one came. And then the next one came. And then the next one came. And Pharaoh and his army that rejected God and rejected the prophets of Moses and Aaron died in an unbeatable death that no one could describe that Israel went through and the enemies of God drowned. And there's come an event where the Christians are going to go through and the enemies of God are going to drown. Israel, O seed of Abraham, his servant, Abraham was a servant of bad word today in history. We got to remove all the southern men monuments and names of the southern bad men that had slaves. And let's not talk about the northerners that also had slaves. People in the north had slaves too. And you move the colored people from this plantation of the south and you put them into ghettos up north. And you've heard about those places in Chicago and Harlem, New York. Where many of the slaves down south went into the church, though they had their own section, they heard the white man's God. Up north, they ain't getting no God. You got that, that, that fictitious writer. My eyes have seen the glory of God in the truth coming to save us. God didn't do nothing for you. Men did it. I'm a servant of the Lord and I'm not ashamed to be a servant of the Lord. Ye children of Jacob, his chosen, we went right over Ishmael. It ain't Arabians. It's Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. You want to talk about history? You know, you know the story of Abraham and Isaac going up to the mountain, and Abraham's going to take Isaac and he's going to slay him because God told him. And I believe that the angel of the Lord came down and said, "No, no, no. I understand. You love me, Abraham. I think there was a goat." Right? We all know the story. Genesis 22. No, you don't. Because I read the I read the Arabian story. I read the 
the the the is the Islam study. And it wasn't Abraham and Isaac. It was Abraham and Ishmael. That's a change of history. That's not Bible. Listen, ain't just America. I ain't kicking just America. I'm kicking worldwide. We read the Bible. The Bible says God gave the land of Cana to Israel. You want to go over to the Middle East and tell them that? Where I've had a missionary who was a missionary over there. And he told me, and I, I did not get enough information. because I was not a student of the Bible yet. I, I, I didn't know what was what, what, what to be comprehended yet. I wish I did because I would wrote it down. But he told me over there, the schools have the maps. And the name of Israel is not on the land of Israel. I don't know what are there. That's not Bible. That's history has been changed. It only get worse. Some believe, and I, I kind of believe this, that the Antichrist is actually going to be Judas. I believe it to a point. And some believe that Judas is going to come up and say, listen, you know that, that, that character Jesus? Man, I, I try to tell you guys that he was all, it was me. And if that is the case, then I don't know. I'm not trying to start no new doctor or anything. But if that's the case, you realize Judas is going to have to change all history? Or at least the Antichrist has? Because in Revelation 19, it says Jesus gets on that horse and he comes, and nobody knows his name. The name of Jesus during the tribulation period is completely wiped out. Watch, just Revelation 19. You've got to change history to do this. Now listen. I'm 51 years old. I was saved in 1987. I've been around. I've been in the world of lost. I've been in the world of saved with lost people. Verse 12. His eyes were as a flame of fire and his head was many crowns. He had a name written that no man knew but he himself. You know what? Men today will take the name of Jesus to cuss. And curse. He has remembered his covenant forever. God's all finished with Israel. That's changing history for wrong. Israel as a nation has been set aside. There are Israelites that get saved today, men and women of the Jewish race. Are coming to Jesus Christ as their Savior. Israel will come back as a corporate during Jacob's trouble, and Jesus Christ will come back to relieve and to redeem and purchase and put a new heart and a new spirit in the nation of Israel. <coughs> there are denominations that don't teach that. That's a change of Bible history. The word which he commanded to a thousand generations. Again, Israel. Which covenant he made with Abraham. Written in Genesis. And an oath to Isaac. There he is. And confirmed the same to Jacob for a law. And to Israel, the children, for an everlasting covenant. God is not and will never, cannot be ever finished. With the nation of Israel. He made a covenant with them. And it's an everlasting covenant. And he'll never break that covenant. And if you say God has. You make God a liar. My God's incapable. Will not. Cannot. Is unable to ever lie. You are the liar. And you need to shut up. Okay. I support Israel all the way. The Bible still holds true about Israel. I will curse them that curse you, and I will bless them that bless you. Saying unto thee, Israel, I will give the land of Cana. There it is. And a lot for your inheritance, and that's all through the Old Testament. We couldn't run this. I got this, I'm doing the outline of the study right now. We couldn't run the scripture in one night. It'll be multiple nights. When they burn. 
when they were but a few men in number. It all started with Abraham and Sarah. Abraham, 100 years old. Sarah, 90 years old. And it began with then Isaac and Rebekah. And it, re it began with Jacob and Leah and Rachel. And it gave up with 12 boys. And look, look, look at the world now. Look at the pop. Look how many Adolf Hitler killed in World War II. Adolf Hitler tried to exterminate all the Jews. It didn't work. Ba Daniel chapter 1, Babylon. They tried to eliminate all the Jews. It didn't work. And it won't work. There are no Babylonians anymore. When they went from one nation to another nation, the book of Numbers, and one kingdom to another people, they traveled up the king's highway. They went through Edom. They went through Moab. They went through the lands there. They crossed the Jordan River. They went through all the land through Joshua. He suffered no man to do them wrong. God, God did not allow men to do them wrong. Yea, he reproved kings for their sake. And there's lists of battle. I think we're at verse 15. Who have we been talking about? We've been talking about the Jewish people. Verse 15. Saying, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. I heard a Christian preacher apply that verse to him. When I tried to tell him he was he was he was not correct in one of his teachings, he came up, touch not my my anointed. Took me a little while to find that in the Bible. It took me a little while to realize this is Jewish. This is not for a Christian preacher. It's Jewish. The nation of Israel is anointed. And if you want to go one step further, the anointed of God is Christ Jesus. Christ means anointed. And do my prophets no harm. That's exactly what Israel did. They murdered and tortured and, and scorned and ridiculed. And we got those stories in the Bible. Jesus tells us about. But when history's changed. Moreover, he called for a famine upon the land, the land of Cana. He broke the whole staff of bread. This is history. We're in Genesis again. He sent a man before them, even Joseph. Who was sold for a servant. The children of Israel, his brothers, sold him to the Israelites, and the Israelites sold him to Potiphar. And Joseph became a servant, a faithful servant in Potiphar's house. Psalms 105, Psalmist is telling us about Genesis. He's telling us Joseph is a real man. Joseph is a real story. You know, there are people that deny what Jesus said. There's no way a, a whale could swallow a man and kill him. Jesus said that Jonas was three days and three nights in the, in, the heart, in the heart of the whale. So shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Where was Jesus when he was in the heart of the earth? Wasn't he dead? I've known three churches and three, one preacher and two Preacher trainees, if you want to call it, that come out of the Pope and say that Jonah didn't die. And I can go find you documentaries how they say, well, if they, if you're in a nasal cavity of a, of a whale, you can, no, no, Jonah died. What are you saying, Stanley? Jesus said there's a Jonah. 
The psalmist in 105 says there's Joseph. We read it the other day how Moses and Aaron were his priests and Samuel. The history of the Bible is confirmed with the Bible. And yet modern Bibles and churches change the history. Now watch this. We didn't learn this in Genesis. Whose feet they hurt with fetters. He was laid in iron. You didn't read about that extra information. When Joseph was in jail, he was, I'm going to say handcuff, he was cuffed at the feet, and being cuffed at the feet hurt. I don't read my Bible. Then you miss a lot of information. Until the time that his word, God's word, came. And the word of the Lord tried him. When did that happen? The dream of the baker and the dream of the uh, the butler. They had a dream one night and they, he, Joseph said, do not interpretation belong to God. And when he, he interpreted those dreams of God, there it is. You know what God was doing with Joseph? I want to see how bitter you are in prison. I want to see how mad you're still at Potiphar's wife. I'm going to get two men. I'm going to give a dream. And I have no idea what those dreams are about. I want you to tell them what I tell you. And Joseph was faithful. And for that, the king sent and loosed him. Because now the king had a dream. Even the ruler of the people let him go free. Joseph. He became the second ruler of Egypt. He made him lord of his house and the ruler of all his substance, all the grain and the wheat, to bind his princes at his pleasure. Joseph had the power, which we didn't read in Genesis. He had the power to say, Pharaoh, that guy needs to go to jail. I wonder what Joseph ever did to Boniface's wife. Ever wonder when she comes up to get her, because Joseph was in charge. They had to come to Joseph to get the grain. Imagine her coming up with her barrel. No way around. Listen, Joseph did not allow his brothers the second time until they brought Benjamin. I can see Boniface's servants. Uh, 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 uh. You go back and get honey pie and tell honey pie to come over here and get her drink. That was the character of Joseph. I guarantee he made Potiphar's wife come. This time he had, you know, witnesses. You know, he's measuring out the gray. What did you say about me? <laughs> and teach his senators, Egyptians, wisdom can you imagine the senate of the united of america calling a king james bible believing ruckmanite into the senate and say before we call forth senator we're going to have an hour class and we're going to go from genesis to revelation and we're going to pray in the name of god of abraham isaac and jacob and if you don't like that you can get out of the senate you can go home to your nation that does not have God in the Bible. That was Joseph, verse 17 to 22. Not only Joseph was going out and giving corn, he was also teaching the Egyptians. And if you cross Joseph, he puts you in jail like he did Simeon. That's history. Israel also came into Egypt. Genesis. And Jacob sojourned the land of Ham. Genesis. He, God, increased his people greatly. Genesis into Exodus. Who gave the, the, who gave the baby Israelites? God gave the baby Israelites. 
And that's recorded in Gen Exodus chapter 1. When, when the Pharaoh wanted them dead and God gave them liberty and had babies and they couldn't even keep track. So what are you going to do when you abort that baby? And the Bible says that that baby came from God. You've got a lot of explaining to do. When you change all history, how would you change history? We're a product of the Big Bang, boom, and now you know we can abort babies. Because they're not really life. You change history to teach abortion. And made them stronger than their enemies. That's why the Pharaoh in, in Exodus chapter 1 was afraid. Man, he says in Exodus chapter 1, at least they join our enemies. And the, the Pharaoh in Exodus chapter 1 is a haiku. He's not really an Egyptian. He's a military leader from another nation. I think it was Assyria. That's what Hitler had a problem with Israel. There was just too many of them. He churned their heart, Egyptian, to hate his people, the Jews. Who churned out off Hitler to hate the Jews? God did. And deals subtly, like like Satan, Genesis 1, I mean, excuse me, Genesis 3, Revelation 12, with his servants, God's servants, the Jews. He sent Moses. You mean Moses was real? You better believe it. His servant, Moses was a servant. And Aaron, Aaron was real? Yes. Whom he had chosen. Who he had chosen. Moses like, I can't speak. I can't talk. I can't do that. I'm going to send your brother then. And Aaron was already on his way for some reason. They showed his signs among them. Egyptians. And the wonders in the land of Ham. That's one of Noah's children. Ham, Africa, belongs to the Hamites. Some of them stopped along Cana and dwelt where they weren't supposed to dwell. So there's something about Ham. Noah's child, I don't know what it is. I've heard both sides. And there's something about the family of Ham that became the colored people. Explain it. I can't. How's that? I don't know. Because then I have to explain how did the Oriental become the yellow brown people? Where did a white man come from? But I can explain to you one thing. Jesus Christ was brown, he wasn't colored, and he wasn't white. He sent darkness, Exodus, and made it dark. And they rebelled not against his word. Who rebelled not? Israel. Sure wasn't the Egyptians. He turned their waters into blood. Oh, look, and their fish died. You know what brought the flies? The dead fish. The land brought forth frogs in abundance in chambers of the kings. I think that's where it says they were in the ovens, they were in the beds, they were everywhere. And Pharaoh, Mr. Nice, wonderful guy, said, Give me one more night with the frogs. Wow. He spanked, God spanked, and there came divers sorts of flies and lice in all their coasts. And coast is a boundary line. That must have been, you ever have one fly aggravate you all day long? That one little fly, you're trying to kill him, you're trying, and man, he's just fly. 
He gave them hail for rain. Now, that's not it. When hail hits you inside the head over rain, uh, I don't think they had windshields then, but. And the flaming fire in their land. And the Bible says it was a hot thunderbolt that ran across. The, here it says it was fire. That lightning in Exodus was a fire. He, God, smote their vines also and their fig trees and break the trees of their coat. Now, I guess the tree huggers would have hated God. He, God, spanked and the locusts came and caterpillars. You didn't read anything about caterpillars, but there they are. And that were without number. And did eat up all the herbs of the land. And devoured the fruit of their ground. When these animals came, they wiped out the crops. He, God, smote all the firstborn of the land. The chief of all their strength. Firstborn child. Male child. He, God, brought them, the Jews, Forth also with silver and gold. And there was not one feeble person among their tribe. They were full, furnished, and ready to go. Egypt was glad when they departed. Until Pharaoh got angry. For the fear of them fell upon them. An army mounted up. And there's no Red Sea mentioned. Here. He spread a cloud for a covering. And fire to give light in the night. That's God. Something about that cloud in the second coming. The people asked. And he brought quail. You mean more like they complained. And satisfied them with the bread of heaven. Manna. It got to the point they were complaining about the manna. Roast manna. Fried manna. Broiled manna. Fresh manna. New manna. Old manna. Leftover manna. Manna sandwiches. Manna speaking. Manna there. Man, they got to a point they complained. Where is all the griping and complaining in Psalms 105? It's not there. He opened the rock and the waters gushed out. They ran in the dry places like a river. So all could drink, the animals and the people. For he, God, remembered his God, holy promise, and Abraham his servant. God has a memory. Except for when it's under the blood. He brought forth his people, Israel, with joy. And his chosen, Israel, with gladness. He gave them the lands of the heathen, Joshua. And they inherit the labor of the people, Joshua. That they might observe his statutes and keep his... They did not. That was the purpose, but they didn't. Praise ye the Lord. Look at what's forgotten there. The griping, the complaining, the disobedience. That's mentioned in other places. 